Welcome, welcome everyone. This is Snoo, and you are tuning in to 1000 Crimson Temple Runs, a plan that I set out basically before the league even started. The moment uh, we became aware of an apothecary card dropping, I didn't know which map it would be doing, but quickly we learned that it is can be found in the Crimson Temple map, potentially another map uh, next league, we'll see. Uh, but we want to see what the drop rate of that card is. Now, there were a lot of major six-man party groups that kind of identified the drop rate of it, but uh, nobody's really pushed the limits, I don't think, on to see what uh, sort of currency per hour or apothecaries per hour, if you will, uh, can be had from a solo player who is really pushing the envelope uh, in terms of speed and clearing efficiency. Uh, I got something of uh, Robin Hood goes to a masked party get up going on here. <laughs> Pretty awesome character though. Uh, mirror tiered raider tornado shot magic find hybrid uh, character that uh, essentially is the same character I made last league. Absolutely loved it. And uh, a lot of you are aware of the soul thirst variant. And that is kind of how I started this character. And it, it enabled me to very quickly. Uh, accumulate a lot of currency to get myself up to this point. If you want to check the character out, you can see in the PoE Ninja or POB linked in the description below. There will be a lot of links in the description below, actually including loot filters and Atlas passive trees and all kinds of stuff. Uh, you can always check that out. Uh, but yeah, this is an exciting one. I've really been looking forward to this video, uh, given the fact that uh, it is a it was a goal of mine uh, to set out and make this video uh, target farming the apothecary card. And let's get into how this is going to look. All right, so here we go. There's a dump tab here. And I got some Exalted Orbs and Chaos on the left. Uh, hopefully, prices stay stable, and I can always use this exact same amount. This is basically 12 Exalts and 70 Chaos. Uh, and this covers the cost of sextants that are used on here. Let's get into this strategy uh, here. We're going to be using a uh, strong box strategy. Double strongbox sextants, cheap strongbox sextant. Actually, the enraged strongbox sextant is now down to 20 chaos a piece. So it's kind of been falling out of favor with a lot of people. It did go all the way up to around 40 chaos a piece at one point, but it was stable around 30 chaos a piece for quite some time. But do bear in mind, it has gone down a bit uh, recently. Delirium sextant is also extremely cheap this league, as we already have it for free on the current crafting bench. And it going. Delirium via Sexton is actually cheaper than it is going uh, the normal way via Kyrick Crafting Bench. Uh, strong boxes are corrupted and, and rare, super ultra cheap, around 5 chaos apiece here. Uh, the Delirium Sexton, for that matter, was about 40 chaos apiece. And then for the last one, kind of flip flopping between Corrupt 8 mod uh, maps, drops, and Hunted Traders, which is sort of a combo I like to do because Hunted Traders doesn't matter a huge amount. Uh, but it definitely puts some free cannon fodder uh, with supposedly higher quantity drops on the map and can very conveniently be swapped out uh, to self-sustaining your map. So unlike, for example, the last juiced Crimson Temple strategy I did, I am actually self-sustaining the maps here, and some of them will be corrupt with Beyond, but the majority of them will just be uh, whatever maps they are, and I can run absolutely any combination of maps on this character which is really really nice uh this might surprise you a bit but i'm going elder scarab on here and we'll get into why that is in a moment here when i'll get into the atlas uh passive tree here we're going divination scarab of course going ambush scarab of course and harbinger is the other one so uh, i was obviously going to go strong box and divination for the scarabs there. The other two were a little bit up in the air till the end, and, and I play tested the many different combinations, uh, but this is what I arrived on. And I will explain now via the Atlas passive tree. This, of course, as mentioned before, will be linked in the description below. So take a look at this. We got the normal looking tree here for shrines, because I always run the gold shrine with the shrine nodes as well as all the uh, relevant strong box passive. Do not need to take tamper proof because I'm using the sextant for that. Harbinger, mandatory harbinger nodes, leaving out a few uh, unimportant ones. Of course, I'll be able to get the inner quantity and rarity wheel in that way. That's always nice. 
going Eater of Worlds with the Shadow of Hunger. And of course Eldritch Gaze in there. Uh, of course using Valley of Darkness because I'm running Headhunter. Blocking virtually everything except um, Heist I suppose because might as well pick up a few blueprints which will not be counted in the total value at the end. Also going Dance of Destruction, not really mandatory for me but uh, just nice. Go ahead and do that. I will be running a Delirium Mirror, so having Descent into Madness and Singular Eternity will be very valuable for me. I think one bit major surprise to a lot of people is the fact that I will be able to basically fully clear these Crimson Temple maps with a Delhi Mirror, which uh, kind of goes against the grain of what Delirium farming typically looks like. Uh, if you check out most content creators, they're using Delhi Orbs. And there are, there are a few possible reasons for that. I think the primary reason they choose to use Deli Orbs over Deli Mirrors is because their not, character's not moving and clearing efficiently enough uh, to get full value out of the Delirium Fog in that way. But that may not be the case. Uh, we can discuss that in the comments below if you'd like. I do have a couple of the Beyond Wheels because they're convenient to get. The bottom one over here uh, is a little bit too far out of the way. Now, I am not running Beyond. On the maps typically but having a free three percent with some uh, improvements here up here and then running the occasional beyond map because it will randomly have beyond on a few of these maps uh, eight modifiers does leave quite a bit of room for a beyond roll to potentially show up on the map and i do think it is worthwhile doing not putting in an extra mechanic like breach or abyss because those take too long this strategy in case you weren't aware, is a strategy I, I did for a large part of Last League on the Cemetery, and it was essentially a sort of speed demon strategy, getting in and out of the map on the Cemetery in about two, <laughs> two to three minutes flat. Uh, in the Crimson Temple, it'd be more like three, three and a half minutes, and that might surprise you. That is extraordinarily fast, and I will show you, as I always do, how I get that done. All right, so that is the strategy. Harbinger, Strongbox, Delirium, and Hunted Traders and an Elder Scarab as kind of extras. Uh, you'll notice that all, basically all of these League mechanics take no time to clear. Virtually no time to clear. And yeah, so it's really, really nice. Got a nice selection of maps to start with. Got a hundred uh, maps to start with, so for this video... Uh, I will be parsing these out in, a, in 10 separate videos, essentially. Uh, I will post them the same way I did the Cemetery 500 maps last time, although it will be 1,000 maps this time. Uh, hopefully I can get this done before the season ends. <laughs> uh, and then I'll post one more video, which is a little bit higher production value, uh, at the very end, kind of showcasing the final results, my final thoughts on it, uh, how I thought it went. Uh, so if you're really just kind of interested in seeing the totally final results you don't need to watch every single video that i come out with but if you're someone who likes tuning in to my stuff and you, know, you might pick up a golden nugget of information here or there you'll get to see kind of the gambling sessions uh, some of the big drops you're obviously going to see numerous apothecary drops <clears throat> in the highlight reel for that you can always check out those videos you can also check out the stream uh, which will be of course linked in the description below sentinels i will not be counting uh, because I self-sustain them, these sentinels look really nice. I know, well, I can self-sustain them pretty easily in top form because uh, I am running Cloak of Tom Isley. If you watched my last video, I had already showcased what a session looks like. As a result, I found a ton of recombinator bases. Uh, I'm going to be using the same format I used in the last video, which is... I will not be counting any recombinator bases that I find that are worth only like half an exalt or even up to about three quarters of an exalt uh, on the market. But any recombinator base that is definitively worth about one X or more, I will count individually as a one X find. Now for the last farming session I did, that ac accounted for approximately 15% of all currency that I found. That was in a mega juiced uh, Crimson Temple uh, farming session. Uh, probably be a little bit less this time, I imagine a little bit less. Uh, because it's just not nearly as many monsters on the map. Not as much stuff is going to drop. But I could be wrong. I'd say it's probably about going to be about 10 to 15% of all currency that I find. I will also, with this beautiful bow here, with maximum quality to socket of gems, be watching, or be uh, leveling some Awakened Exceptional Gems. 
possibly even empower or enlighten support that time depending on my cash uh, cash on hand <laughs> but uh, it, probably every single case I'm gonna be uh, doing awakened exceptional gems of some kind and over here I will always be uh, leveling a, a sort of awakened g generic awakened gem uh, I will count all of the gems that are leveled at fully leveled at one exalt a piece to me they're worth more than one exalt a piece leveled and I tend to run them at the end with uh, double double corruption rooms, one for the gem, one for the item. It might be uh, Aegis Aura, it might be a uh, cloak, it might be, um, I don't know, could be a Chevron's, could be a uh, Goldworm. But I'm going to be double corrupting a whole bunch of stuff. And if you want to see the double corruptions, you will have to check the stream because I'm not going to post that. Uh, in the video that is kind of condensing everything down. On that note, I don't want to talk for too long. I want to get into this farming session. Uh, but yeah, I do want to I, I do want to prepare you guys so you know that uh, I'm going to be counting leveled gems. I'm going to be counting recombinator bases. Uh, I'm also going to be counting uh, cluster jewels, extremely high value cluster jewels that occasionally drop. Uh, for example, the um, mana reservation uh, three. Three slot mana reservation, 84 eye level plus gems. They were worth like 4x a piece, something like that. So, so on, on rare occasion, I will see those uh, drop. Now, the reason I am counting those is because I'm running Delirium on every single map. So it is part of the target farm. I will be counting mirror shards if they drop. I did actually get a mirror shard on the last one. I will not be counting like absolute outrageous drops like headhunters and mage bloods. Um, but basically everything else. Everything else besides the headhunter and mage blood, I'm, I'm going to count. And it seems fair to count those things because this is an enormous uh, sample size. <laughs> I mean, it could be bigger, but I mean, it's going to be a thousand maps. Uh, so things are going to even themselves out pretty well in the end, I think. So I invite you along to check out this uh, farming session by all means. Uh, watch all 11 videos if you'd like. <laughs> you can always post questions in the comments below. But we're going to kick this thing off now. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how long it'll take, but I'll figure out pretty quickly. I, th I think I'm only going to spend about three, three and a half minutes per map. There will be a little bit of extra time in the hideout. Uh, so it's probably going to look something like seven hours, if I'm not mistaken, uh, to do all the runs. I could be mistaken about that. Uh, but I can see down here, the clock is at 9.10. But first, I got to, you know, do a little show and tell. So you can see the dump tabs are good set ready to go it does not count sentinels by the way which is convenient because i'm not uh, counting sentinels i'm self-sustaining them perfectly fine i rarely ever buy them or sell them anymore uh i have the 12 raw exalts and 70 chaos orbs to cover the cost of the sextants the scarabs are all right here the maps are all right here you know the maps they're eight mod corrupted they're extremely convenient i don't roll them at all so there's no reason to uh, count them as any sort of extra uh beyond their value of 3.78 <laughs> chaos apparently uh, 26.39 is the starting tally. So that will go right there. At the end of the 100 maps, we'll figure all the rest of this out. So uh, sit back, relax, uh, learn a few things, enjoy the highlights, enjoy the, the gambling. And I'm going to enjoy doing these runs. Because I actually do enjoy doing these runs. I, I thought for a second I might actually dread having to do a thousand maps. We'll see if, if I don't <laughs> regret... Uh, Making a goal to do a thousand map, but I like setting a rough, uh, a challenging goal and fulfilling that goal. That is a very fun process for me. And I know there are a lot of you who have asked me to do something like this. I even made the suggestion, what should I do? 500 or a thousand maps? And you guys, you guys said it. A thousand maps. You know, I don't do everything that the community wants me to do, but if I'm in the mood, which I am for this, we are going to do a thousand Crimson Temple maps. And we're about to kick off map number one. Just going to reset. Reset the excellence. So I make sure I get all the timers right. 25.86 exalts. Huh. It suddenly went down. That's weird. Oh, it's because I put Hello. the scarabs in. Duh. <laughs> okay. That's there. Gonna pull out this currency. Running domination this time. I didn't talk about this, uh, but I am running shrines. I decided to do domination. I could have done uh, fortune favors the brave with 
reshaping of the valleys potentially. I would recommend doing that if you're not a shrine player. You can pull your points out of the shrines and do shaping of the valleys instead and then put some more points in the rest of the harbinger or quantity wheel and stuff. Uh, but I think one thing I want to prove... Oh yeah, I'm not running any Alva or anything like that either. I'm not going to be doing any kind of harvest or Alva or anything like that. Just going jumping straight in to the maps. <coughs> One thing I do like showcasing is just how incredibly strong uh, these shrines are uh, when you use them to your advantage, like you're going to see you me do. Uh, th there are quite a few shrine effects that I'm going to have. And I'm going to be able to pick up the major acceleration speed shrines frequently, on average, I'd say at least once every other map. And it's going to, you know have a dra pretty dramatic effect on how fast I can run the maps. See, I can beeline straight to the boss. There's even a harbinger. There's quite often a harbinger that spawns back here. I will kill the harbinger back here. It does extend the timing of the mirror. My biggest concern right now is getting back to the front before the mirror starts expiring. Remember what I said a moment ago about going all, getting the full clear of the map with the mirror. So we'll see if I can pull that off. Go ahead and use a sentinel here. That's a pretty good place to do it. Pretty damn good drops, right? Okay, and I don't see... Okay, the timer is just kind of flickering right here at the beginning, so it's not too bad. I, I might have missed, you know, 1% of the map. <laughs> oh, well. So now, if I want to keep that mirror at bay, what I've got to do is i got to constantly do the league mechanics. I have to open up the strong box. They're going to kill Harbingers. That will do it. But really, I'm more concerned about picking up the shrines. Oh, there we go. Major acceleration speed shrine, just like I said. So now, uh, things are going to look a little different here. The pathing is kind of like a figure eight, in case you weren't uh, aware how the pathing works for this map. Of course, you've got to not get stuck, <laughs> preferably. Uh, but I basically picked up all the shrines now. Now my focus is, since I got all the du duplication divination shrines that I might have gotten, or the increased quantity and rarity shrines I might have gotten, now my focus is really on killing the harbingers and opening the strong boxes. Still not on looting really anything. Kind of messed up a little bit of the map down here. Didn't quite kill all this stuff here. Uh, so... The map was uh, layout was a little bit unusual there. Wow, this game being rude, not letting me drop the belt on the ground. But anyway, not too bad, not too bad. I usually see about 60 uh, simulacrum splinters doing this. And now it's just loot time. Wow, I got a lot of. I'm actually quite impressed at how much loot drops <laughs> on these maps with uh, the, you know, the just straight up. There's no legion to use the pandemonium sentinel on. There's no, uh, there's no alva incursion to use it on. It's, there's no obvious thing to use it on, uh, but I, I usually end up deciding to use it just where, in, in a room like the one I'm standing at right here, it's just packed full of, of Elder Influence Monsters, Eldritch Influence Monsters, Hunted Traders, Harbingers, maybe even some strong boxes opened on top of everything else. And yeah, somehow there's a... I missed a strong box right here in the middle. So getting a little warmed up right here, that was actually one of... not a particularly well executed map by my standards. Mana is gone. All right, and you saw I got a carbonizing Imperial Claw thanks to the chest. I was able to see the loot on here, and this is not a supremely valuable base. I don't think it will be a, definitely not a 1x uh, base, but it is something that I will be able to sell for quite a few chaos. All right, here we go, map number two. Quick and easy. Yes, sir. Those recombinator bases are going to add up. Going to add up in the end. Let's see if I can uh, perform this one a little bit better than the last. It's always harder, you know, when I'm talking, trying to concentrate on <laughs> talking. Up, oh, there's a. These here definitely want the quantity and rarity 
if possible. You can see I j I just hit the front end of that mirror. And now the mirror has progressed all the way. The mirror is honestly it, it, it progresses kind of gradually, but it's gonna start progressing towards the back end now if I'm not careful. So what I gotta do is I gotta start moving over quickly. Oh hey, I didn't expect to see that. I got seven years bad luck already. <laughs> On the second run, that's quite fortunate. I'm definitely not going to see that every other run by any stretch of the imagination, but I already got it. Oh, let's see, that's that. Duplicated divination card <laughs> right after I found the divination card. That's kind of unfortunate, but oh well. I did make it all the way back here. The Deli Mirror has not started moving one iota. There, I can see the Sentinel with the Fossil Reward. Extra duplicated current uh, divination card. Definitely, uh, definitely hope to see an Apothecary drop now because it's a pretty reasonable chance of being duped. Okay, all the shrines are gotten. Now the focus here. I'm going to run the middle gambit and open all the strong boxes if I can. Hopefully find them. Unlock all the rest of the Delirium stuff. Hopefully getting this done before the mirror moves too much. Yeah, definitely uh, performing a little bit uh, better this one. Although I need to use a sentinel before I forget. I'm forgetting to use the sentinels there. So I got the I got a, a high count stalker sentinel. I can just use on the strong box monsters that spawn there. No big deal. Like this, you can see. Wow, and then power support too. Not really worth all that much these days, though. Hoping for at least one more strong box. Oh, a harbinger will work there. So I'll get I'll get all the value of the uh, sentinels. I think. Very very close to it. Ah, here we go. <laughs> Double Divine Orb. You know, I did a warm-up run, and the map before I did the real run, I got a double <laughs> Exalted Orb drop from Strongbox. So I was like, oh, why couldn't that have happened on my first actual map? I'm sure we're going to see that a few times. Actually, I think that is actually what's something. My shrine effects do not last a full two minutes because I'm not using a gloom shrine. Sometimes you run a gloom shrine. I decided against it. Could have done it, but uh, it's really not necessary for this farm, especially with the tight corners and everything. Uh, really not necessary. Uh, for killing purposes, if I used it, I would actually use it more for the, the shrine uh, length <laughs> duration uh, than anything else. Question in the chat said, how many apothecaries have you got so far? Uh, well, this is only map number two, so zero. Uh, but uh, I'm guessing maybe you mean in the lifetime of this league? Well, the answer would probably be around 30, maybe. Maybe not 30. Uh, tw 25 to 30? Certainly 20 to 30, somewhere in there. Yeah. Div cards, can we drop some regular div cards? The samurai eye, well <laughs> Okay. That's special. Almost lost a deli mirror. I gotta focus here a little bit right now. So on the very, very beginning of this map I found an eighteen percent duplicate divination uh, uh, altar. And then, midway through the map, I hit an altar that had fairly high rolls on quantity and rarity, or 5% chance for Eldritch Monsters to drop a Divination card. And I said to myself, you know what, it's probably smarter to double up the synergies between duplicated Divination cards and increased uh, and some Divination cards, because I still had some of the map left to run. And that just paid off in a massive way right there. That does happen.
Dragon's Heart. Okay. We'll be counting those too. Got a red star back behind me and didn't actually see what it was. I'll have to go check it out when we get on that circuit. Could be the big one. The harbinger to kill is good. at all. See what it is. There she is. The enlightened. Ooh. Ooh. The not so good card. Oh well. In other news, I actually ran this map properly and did the circuit right. I believe I have opened up every strong box once I get right here. A dragon's heart too, wow. How am I getting dragon heart? Dude, the dragon heart is not all that much more common than an apothecary. <laughs> like they're pretty similar drop rates. I've already seen two of them. Batman altars. What the fuck? <laughs> this... This Pandemonium... I didn't even realize this. This Pandemonium Sentinel... Triggers 337 monsters. <laughs> I, I, I guess it's like a cryptic Pandemonium Sentinel with tier 1 rolls there. What? Okay, this is so bizarre. I, th there's so many divination cards... That... I have to target farm here, and I keep getting ones that are not under the purview of the target farm. <laughs> Double alluring bounty. Uh, now, once again, I had hit one du divination duplicate, but that was a clear example, and somebody actually in chat just asked recently, are you specifically running divination card reward sentinels? I said no, but <clears throat> by chance, it is pretty common because it's a, it's a pretty good sentinel roll. So it's pretty frequently on my sentinel, and that that did, that was not a divination card that spawned off of an eldritch minion uh, from you know the altar. That was just a sentinel infused monster that uh, was infused with a divination card reward that also got the benefit from duplicated divination card altar earlier because it applies. So very much in the same vein that Legion on Legion can, you know, double dip the rewards of Legion, uh, Sentinel rewards, duplicate raw uh, splinters and or uh, emblems. Uh, that's essentially what just happened there. I got a duplicated alluring bounty from that. So now I'm thinking maybe I should <laughs> consider uh, targeting divination card rewards from the Sentinel. I'm not up to that just yet. Would not be a bad idea. Chainmail. 
think I used a six link incubator. That is though. That's very likely to be a div card. What? What? Okay, that was just straight up duplicated divination cards out of a finer strong box, I guess. Four alluring bounties I've found this session. <laughs> In, like, 30 maps or something? <laughs> what the hell? I could have very easily gone all 1,000 maps without seeing that card. Uh, okay. Sure. Whatever. Getting trolled so hard right now. Getting the wrong divination cards. My Strong gone. box. So good, though. Lord. Ah. Oh, I didn't see this one over here. It's hiding. Okay, well, there's a an actual divination card from the map. Uh, an enlightened, though. So who cares? Firing staff again. Whoa! 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 Classic. Classic Apothecary off of the Monsters from the Strong Box, 500% increased quantity. At the very end of the map, and honestly, like, more maps than not am I getting at least one uh, duplicated divination card. Percent drop chance. But this map I did not. I kept finding uh, percent chance to drop divination cards instead. Oh uh, man, so no chance to duplicate there. Heh. <sighs> but hey, today I was hoping to get at least uh, two divination, uh, two apothecaries in 100 maps. Just got the first one around map number 45, maybe. So looking not too shabby. Ah, div do already. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is this? How do you keep doing this to me? What the heck? I've only dropped that card like three times this whole league. <laughs> if that, maybe only like once. My god, that's like one in a million! It's, it's that card that keeps coming out of there. What the fuck? I can't believe it, man. This is freaking. <laughs> I'm serious. Possessing this map, possessing my like, Crimson Temples, like. There is no doubt in my mind now. Oh my god. Okay, that's a very well-deserved Exalted Orb. Overdue, honestly. Finally got uh, an Exalted Orb from a Sentinel reward. On like a massive 5% quantity Sentinel. <laughs> or 5% quantity currency Sentinel. Hey! Okay, finally broke the terrible RNG we've been having here. Had a dry spell of like... I think counting the, for the break, maybe 30 maps or so without a single divination card. Or no, not 30 maps. Yeah, at least 20 maps. 
basically just went 20 maps or so without a single map specific divination card took an enlightened to break break this streak I don't even care I'm just happy to see it break increased rarity drops and and uh, quantity alter I put you out of your misery this map is getting juiced really hard. It's only about halfway through my Oh, the red star! Oh, one enlightened! One enlightened! Uh, get out of here. I got back to back enlightened. One this map, one last map. Mildly devastated that, that was not duplicated. Live searches are godsend. <laughs> seven years bad luck. Well, there we go. Finally got my, <clears throat> got my second seven years bad luck on like map number 78 or something. Uh, I was really getting a little concerned <laughs> about that card. It is not that rare. Uh, Should have seen it. Should have seen uh, more of those by now, in my opinion, but uh, <laughs> I could be mistaken. Anyway, happy to see that card. Pretty good about uh, the farming strategy of, of kind of quick in and out of the map. Make a lot of currency. We've got a red star here. What is this? An enlightened. Uh, just an enlightened. Shucks. And my heart. had my hopes up. These divination cards are trickling in now. Not too shabby. I, I'm starting to see kind of a normal spread. I, I would like to see maybe one more seven years bad luck. One more, one more of each card, basically. I think would put me right in alignment. Anyway, we're more or less on pace for that. Because there's, there's still like 17 maps left or something like that. Wow, that happened. Hey, back. I mentioned earlier. <laughs> yeah, wasn't that like map number one? Two divine orbs dropped, and but like the map before that and the warm up, it was two exalted orb drops from Arcana Strongbox, and I just got that to happen again. I'm actually kind of surprised that happened on <laughs> within the first session. A fairly rare occurrence there, but. Will happen a few times. Red star? I didn't see that. Did you hear that sound? Hmm. Let's just hear it again. Oh, never mind. I can't hear it. Oh, an Aegis Aura. Wow. Wow, man. The quality, though. No quality. It randomly. It came out corrupted out of a strong box with plus one level socketing gems. <laughs> But it's not amazing because the quality is garbage. There's no quality, so it's only 1100. And it rolled really high, too. Jesus, it rolled almost perfect. 20% elemental, 395. I wonder what the uh, default... God, that would have been absolutely absurd if that had rolled with quality on it. But with no quality, I'm afraid it's not actually worth a huge amount. It's still definitely going to be uh, a multi-X item, though. Drop that. That's that's an insane, uh, unique drop. Holy shit, that's balling crazy. Highlight for sure. Wow. I haven't killed Baron in like a month and a half. You have fabricated your entire memory. Wow. The enlightened. Right off the bat. What a different card. No, I'm not killing him right now because I need to get my use of Jelly Mirror first.
a lot of loot sounds. But not the right kind of loot sound. Oh wait, there's one. Ha! <laughs> Two desecrated virtues? Boy, this 100 map session really was all about the Diviner's Strongbox drop. <laughs> Jeez. Oh my goodness. It's actually pretty rare, like, getting a duplicated high value Diviner's Strongbox drops. I mean, that's... I don't know. I feel like I, I would see that on average, like, once every... 200 maps or something? I've just seen it five times now. Actually, no. Uh, I forgot. I think one or two of those uh, duplicated divi uh, divination card, non-map non -map specific divination cards were actually um, just raw drops because of the altar duplication effect. Oh, that was easy. Oh yeah, this is part of a highlight reel. So if you're wondering how the hell Baron is in this map, I'm just running uh, an 8 mod corrupted conquer map that dropped during this session. So instead of keeping it, I'm just going to run it uh, since obviously it's a good map to run. Um, no, you wouldn't be able to like <laughs> buy this kind of map really. So, you know, I found it. I'm running it. Uh, that's how I got a map like this. I also have uh, a one more map like this too. Pretty cool. So when you run the 8 mod corrupted map sextant and you kill the map boss, sometimes the map boss drops a conqueror ma map of the same map type that you're currently running. And if it drops, well, then voila, 8 mod corrupted Crimson Temple conqueror map. <laughs> That's super awesome. <laughs> so, of course I'm gonna run that. Here we go, I think there's two maps left. The drops have been alright. Like just hoping for another apothecary at this point. Dragon's heart, yeah. Fuck you too. That's the game throwing the middle finger up in my face. Right there. <laughs> Not what I wanted. Well, folks, you know what time it is. It is time to check out the results of this first 100 maps in the 1000 Crimson Temple map mega testing session. Not too shabby. Had some ups and downs. Got some extraordinarily good RNG on random high value divination cards. Uh, but anyway, we got uh, the, the dump tabs here. A and B, all nice and cleaned up. Uh, quite a few uniques in there that are actually worth something. Also a bit surprising. Uh, but the unfortunate truth is that I only got one apothecary card. And in a farm like this, it's really all about the apothecary cards. How many of those are going to drop? And we're going to find out in the long run how many are going to drop. So I only got one this time. I estimate between two and three. Probably closer to two on average in 100 maps. Uh, I'm definitely, definitely looking forward to seeing what those actual results are across a thousand map. I'm sure without a doubt, at least one of these 10 separate sessions, I'm going to get zero apothecary cards. And I'm also sure that at least one of them, I'm going to get like five or more. Um, I had done a testing run of 48 maps and gotten three, you know, before uh, doing this session. So I certainly know three in 48 maps is perfectly possible uh, uh, I've even seen two separate apothecaries drop in the same map <laughs> like separate drop uh, so I'm looking look forward to those kind of crazy highlights in the future not this time though uh, but it was it was fairly standard by the numbers the only uh, really odd things in here are uh, alluring bounty six I mean that that's troll level <laughs> Uh, random apoth uh, random uh, high value divination card drops and then there's also a couple of desecrated virtues and a couple of samurai 
eyes. So that's a total of five random high value non-map specific divination cards that dropped uh, in 100 maps. Extremely uh, unusual sort of thing. So, you know, you get your currency where you can, <laughs> I guess. Uh, 16 raw exalted orbs. I don't know, probably at least four or five of those are actually... Uh, an accumulation of exalted shards. I mean, just just an absolute ton of exalted shards uh, dropped from all the harbingers. Uh, I'm really surprised to see 423 stacked decks. So that is just a result of me having an unusually high number of divination card sentinel rewards. Uh, they're just dropping tons of stacked decks. Two seven years bad luck. Definitely under uh, what what you'd normally see there. I'd expect to see probably four or five. At least three uh, in 100 maps. Uh, let's see. Anything else kind of crazy here? 58 Divine Orbs. Huh? Yeah. Uh, 16 Simulacrum. Definitely had some uh, Expedition Reward Sentinels involved uh, with this round here. Uh, my Sentinels just keep getting higher and higher quality <laughs> over time. Uh, some Scarabs. Uh, some Uniques in here. Let's check the Uniques because they are... Uh, quite surprising, I thought. Uh, so I did get one Aegis, uh, and it dropped Corrupted with a My great corruption on it, actually. And I'll show you that right now. You would have seen it in the highlight. So this was one hell of a drop. It's extremely high rolls, nearly perfect drop rolls. Uh, but the big problem is that because it doesn't have quality, uh, it cannot be worth a huge amount. However, this is definitely estimated probably somewhere around 10x, uh, maybe, as a unique, but it will only be counted as uh, 1x for the sake of this farm, uh, and Excellence uh, is calculating it as such. So, just wanted to point that out. Uh, I would say that this is a, actually a pretty good showing, as far as uniques, because uniques are really down in the dump this league uh, so you, you're typically not going to see much value from uniques I and mean, it does end up apparently cumulative of only 278 <laughs> chaos but uh, even that is a good showing in uniques so honestly i probably don't really even need to talk much about uniques uh with this farm it's just going to be even if the rng is great uh with the exception of you know mage blood and uh unnatural instinct and all that with the exception of those select few items the the value from Unix is never going to amount to much at all. What would be interesting to find out is if I type it properly, uh, delirium orb drops. So let's see how many of these dropped. Uh, the approximate value here. See like around forty one seven fifty two. Yeah, this so looks like somewhere around seventy. Uh, that that's surprisingly good. I think uh, around seventy delirium orbs dropped in a hundred maps. I'd say that's pretty nice. Get a lot of extra currency uh, there. Yeah. 27 Ancient Orbs. 56 Burma. <laughs> yeah, you can see I ran some Expedition expedition Rewards stuff there. Well, that is kind of the story on that front. According to Excellence, we're looking at 153.5, I think. So that is our uh, starting gross, but of course we got to make a few additional um, changes there. And what we're going to add is some um, gems. Now I suspected I was going to level two full rounds of exceptional support gems. You can see that I came very, very close to it. <laughs> I am actually like a sliver away uh, from hitting that. So. Unfortunately, uh, I, I did not level two full rounds. I leveled 1.95 rounds <laughs> of gems. So we're only going to count the ones that I did fully level, which is a uh, three uh, awakened elemental damage with attack supports that were leveled in the quiver, and then six more that were leveled in the bow. And I suspect what this means is, you know, when I do the next 100 map session, I will have 12 of the exceptional support gems leveled completely. Uh, but for the sake of this video, we're going to count uh, nine. Each one of these I value at 1x. They're definitely worth more than 1x, especially like Awakened and Power Supports, you know, fully leveled. Uh, definitely worth more than 1x. Of course, it'll be exciting to see the gambling portion where we'll uh, double corrupt uh, six of these anyway. 
Uh, but that is an additional nine exalts going into the gross amount there. And then the other portion that is not calculated by excellence is, of course, my decision to run Cloak of Tom uh, and having uh, fixed up my loot filter. Uh, done a lot of work on that so I can identify the high value recombinator bases that drop in the maps. And these are the ones that were worth quite a bit. Uh, somewhere, basically, all of these are worth in the range of about one to three exalts. Uh, a couple of them might be worth a little bit less than an exalt, but it's definitely going to average itself out. Yes, the markets are pretty active on that. Yes, even Judgment Staff's <laughs> market is very active. I, I don't really know why, uh, but that's what it is. This is probably the best one here. Merciless Prophecy Wand is worth a, a huge amount uh, because that is the uh, the base for physical wands, kinetic blasts, you know, things like that. Um, Dictator, imbued wand, very good. All these magister scepters are worth a lot. Uh, so, yeah, these are all going to be counted as one XP. So let's see how many we got. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Let me do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Yeah, sixteen. Sixteen additional exalts uh, counted there. So that's going to crank it up to. 178 okay so 178 X and this is this is quite a low investment cost in fact let's see what this investment cost is per map I, I didn't actually check that uh, so you take two okay so this is actually less than 50 uh, looking at investment cost around 48 chaos per map pretty cool to be that low uh, 26, 39, and, and quite easy to gather the materials. Uh, doesn't take you very long at all. Now, of course, when calculating the exalt per hour, people sometimes bring this up, where you're not really counting the time it takes to gather the materials. You're not really counting the time it takes to liquidate everything. That's true. And basically nobody does uh, for the sake of these videos. It's something you have to understand. Uh, then when it comes to the creation of these videos, I wouldn't mind counting those things, although that would... That in introduces just an enormous number of variables. Nobody really wants to try and factor that in legitimately. So we just kind of have to talk about it on the side. Um, the only, as far as time it takes to do these runs, only counting the time once I have all the materials gathered, once I'm ready to go, the time it takes me to clear the maps, uh, go in and hide out, deposit the loot, get the next map ready, go in. The time it takes to actually run the maps basically is uh, the time that is calculated for the sake of the X per hour, that is, uh, so we're looking at a net 152. It took me a total of six hours and 45 minutes to do all of this. And that looks like that's going to be consistent all the way through. So that is 6.75. And we can see that the X per hour is 22.53. Now, I had done some test runs, and that, that does line up to what I expected to see if one exalt, uh, sorry, if one uh, apothecary dropped. So, the really interesting thing is, let's, for for example, let's just imagine here, because this is going to what be what the kind of future looks like. Uh, let's say I had uh, two apothecaries drop, and similar thing, just, just for fun, we'll see. Something like that. All right, uh, 6.75. So that would be 27. 27 drop. And if I get three, which I think, you know, in some cases I will get three. That's gonna be well over 30X an hour. So I am hoping, so you, you can see, like I said earlier, in the, I think I said at one point earlier in the video, my projection is somewhere around 30x an hour. That's kind of my goal for this particular farm across a thousand maps. My goal is to hit 30x an hour. I wonder if that's actually possible. I mean, it, theoretically, it should be if, if I do, in fact, get uh, an average of two or three um, apothecaries per 100 maps didn't happen this first hundred maps so I could be way off base here it may not happen uh, but with absolute certainty at least one 
apothecary uh, per 100 maps with this kind of map setup and juice. I mean, that, there's no doubt in my mind. Uh, so so for any, if any of you are like naysayers saying, well, you're lucky you even got one, uh, I would contest that. I would definitely contest that. But if, if, if you're saying, well, I think you know, two is pushing it. You're probably not going to get two X and a, uh, two apothecaries in a hundred map. You could be right about that. I still say it's probably not true, uh, but could be right. Uh, but with absolute certainty, at least one uh, apothecary in a hundred maps is going to be an average. Um, I would bet money that I'm going to see it at least 15 apothecaries in a hundred maps at the very least, at least 15. Uh, we'll see what the total tally comes out to. Uh, but for now, uh, that is where we're at. And that basically con concludes this portion of the video, the part that uh, goes over the rewards. Now, next we're going to do the gambling part, and I am going to run that all here with, let's see, we're going to do, of course, we're going to do six of these. And then we'll run that. And yes, I think I'll actually double crop my headhunter. This was my old headhunter. I got a new one on now. Kind of want to just sell the headhunter and not corrupt it, but... Eh, okay. Do that. Gambling portion is afoot. I have just done six double corrupted temples for gems and uniques. Sad to report, I did not get a single level 5, and I even went down on 2. So, you know, normally, out of 6 gems, you would get at least 1 down and 1 up. But I only went down on 2, so really sad. Painful. Cost me a lot, <laughs> especially with the Empower supports. Uh, but uh, in the long run, the investment will be worthwhile. On a positive note, um, I had a couple items survive. Yeah, my Headhunter also bricked. Uh, so that was a loss. Uh, but the uh, cloak survived. One of the shields survived. And then I hit this absolute monster. If I'm not mistaken, this is a, a, a monster shield. Uh, worth well over 50x. Might be worth over 100x. Might be 200x. I, I don't really know <laughs> what this is worth. Uh, but if you if you take a look at the static rolls on this. This is, this is uh, extremely high tier armor. Evasion with um, certainly it with two these are two premium rolls they may not be the best roll i think the absolute best roll is physical damage taken as chaos because they have uh, chaos inoculation um, for the uh, righteous fire build but i've already witnessed a player purchase just the crit mod for like 40x i've already witnessed that and so I imagine uh, with the Fizz damage to extra fire, it's probably, you know, at least double. At least double that value. Might take me a long time to sell this shield, uh, but it's certainly going to sell for a, a huge amount. Uh, so, but, but even that is not going to make up for the loss uh, from the gems. Because I definitely am down like, I don't know, uh, 200x. <laughs> <laughs> from the gems, the fact that none of them uh, they hit them hit. Uh, on a side note, uh, I had mentioned that my other gems had not quite leveled. Well, apparently, just doing six temple chronicles uh, leveled these gems up. So what I'm going to do as a service announcement is I'm going to level these gems, and they are going to go in automatically as part of the next 100 set uh, gem leveling process because. You know, 99% of this was leveled in the Crimson Temple. Uh, so that is, they're going to count. So I know some people might be wondering how, how I just start off with <laughs> fully leveled, uh, awakened, and exceptional gems. That's how that happened. Uh, so for the rest of this run, just uh, put these away in here for now. First of all, very quickly, going to single corrupt these Awaken LML damage with attack support. That's interesting. Nothing happened on all of them. Okay. <laughs> you don't really lose any money on these kind of uh, low stakes. And then the very last thing to do is a huge amount of stack decks. Honestly, can't believe how many stack decks I have. 
to do. Some crazy number of div card reward sentinels I did in this session. Some more there. So yeah. Maybe we'll get some, you know, a house of mirrors or something. I'll make up for everything. Actually, no, I, I would have to get like four house of mirrors, I think. <laughs> something to make up for that. It seems like every time I do these on stream, I get garbage. Uh, I'm better off doing them off stream because that's when I see apothecaries come out of here and doctor cards and uh my mana is gone uh, other things <laughs> worth a lot not a good start okay Definitely seeing some things come out of here, but nothing, nothing great. Yeah, some commenters says a uh, stack deck could give me the missing apothecary. It's true, could happen. Really, did I really do that? Hey now. Hey now. What are you doing? What? Anyway, I think there I think there's an actual one stack deck on the ground. No, apparently not. That would show up on my loot filter, so I <laughs> I don't know what the what happened there. just want to hear that sound. You know that sound I'm talking about. I'm not up to that just yet. Some people have mentioned uh, they'd like GGG to make this process a little more streamlined. But I don't know. I mean, you're supposed to feel the weight of these stack decks. They do weigh a lot. My hands... My, my right hand literally starting to hurt right now. It's crazy. My, I have more hand pain from opening stack decks than I do from doing Crimson Temple at the pace that I do it. Isn't that odd? Well, I gotta say, it's pretty, pretty awful right now. I mean, four, 400 something stack decks. I mean, th this is basically like five exalts worth of stack decks. And I might have one exalt sitting down here <laughs> that would be not easy to liquidate, by the way. So I don't know about this. Looking pretty awful. If I just throw 10 stack decks on the ground, it's actually the most valuable thing I've found so far. Are you really going to go 400 some odd stack decks without a single high value one? That is atrocious. I 
If you can't tell, I'm feeling a little bit salty right now after uh, not getting a single up on the gems. And uh, getting screwed over on the stack decks, not getting two apothecaries. <laughs> the only thing I got to show for it is that amazing shield, double corruption. just dropping even less and less like I don't even see anything coming out of these last few holy crap that is wow make it make it stop make it stop life sprig last card life sprig I'm not up to that just yet. <laughs> okay well that my friends is what throwing a lot of currency away looks like <laughs> the stack deck I don't really even like doing stack decks, to be honest. I just, I'd rather just open them than, than uh, sell them. I still think, even with this terrible showing right here, I still think I've uh, come out well ahead with stack decks. I mean, I've gotten two apothecary drops out of stack decks this league. I've gotten at least one doctor card. I, I've seen a lot of stuff come out of stack decks. Off stream, always. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, how salty can you be when you just made 22x an hour? Still. Um, or shall we say 20x an hour, counting the not counting the gambling portion. <laughs> okay. Video finished. First 100 maps done. Let me know what you think. What do you think uh, is the future is going to look like? Do you think I'm going to get uh, one apothecary card in 100 maps on average do you think uh, or how many apothecary cards do you suspect i'll get in a thousand maps anyway i mean i guess that is uh the burning question isn't it uh, i'm anticipating uh 20 at least uh, 20 uh, 20 to 25 would be my guess uh but yeah actually no i think it's more closer to 20 because i only got what i only got uh 24 Brother Stash is right, and I think the Apothecary drops. Some people are saying it's the same as Brother Stash, but I think it's a little less. But not a lot less. Anyway, let's hear your comments in the comment section below. And by all means, stay tuned for more videos to come. Again, I mentioned this earlier. If, if you're not really that interested in seeing the results each hundred maps in, skip those videos. Uh, and just check out the very, very last video, which will be the one, the, the entire summation of everything, Thousand Map. Uh, but uh, yeah, you're always going to hear me talking about various things about this farming strategy, different little nuggets of information. You probably pick up a thing or two, <laughs> if you do, watch the videos all the way through. And as always, I will see you in the next video, okay? Bye for now.